Hello and welcome to section 7.3 mutation and we're going to be talking about what causes mutations, compare and contrast different types of mutations, and explain how they may affect the organisms. One of the things I wanted to say up front is uh, there are many types of mutations and sometimes these mutations have no effect whatsoever on an organism could have a bad effect on an organism or a mutation could have a good effect. So it it's runs the gamut of all three. So let's take a look at um, mutations. So a change in the sequence of the DNA or the RNA is called a mutation. Uh, and we've talked a little bit about uh, those mutations and what they can do for us. Let's take a look at some of the causes of mutations. This slide is surprising to a number of students because they knew about radiation. For example, too many x-rays can cause uh, radi uh, can cause your DNA uh, to become broken or mismanaged. Uh, and people know about sunlight. Sunlight, the UV radiation is very bad for us and can cause um, DNA mistakes in our skin that can lead to tumors. But a lot of people don't know that certain chemicals, chemicals like benzoyl peroxide, barbecuing will create mutagenic chemicals in our food. Uh, some foods like hot dogs and certain processed meats have nitrates and nitrate preservatives in them which are not good for us. And of course we know that cigarette smoking is bad for us as well, can cause lots and lots of problems in our lungs and the cells in our lungs. There are also um, infectious agents um, like bacteria which can, which can spread through contaminated food and also HPV which is a virus that can be spread sexually uh, uh, in human beings. So these are all, anything that causes a problem in DNA or RNA are called mutagens. And these mutagens cause changes or mutations in our DNA or RNA. There are two major categories of mutation. One is called the germline mutation and one is called the somatic mutation. Germline mutations, they can occur in gametes. Remember what gametes were? Those are our sex cells. The egg, if you're female, the sperm, if you're male. And if you cause genetic damage here, that could have significance for your offspring. Uh, those are much rarer than the second type, which are called somatic uh, mutations, and they can occur in any of uh, the cells in our body. Um, they can be caused by smoking and the mutagens that we saw in the previous slide, like exposure to radiation. So germline, only your sex cells, gametes, somatic mutations can occur in any of our body cells. There are many ways uh, that uh, mutations can occur. For example, entire, for example, in this first one, this is a picture of a, a chromosome. A whole section of chromosome might be deleted by accident, or it might be duplicated by accident, or a section of one chromosome might be inverted, turned upside down, uh, which can cause a problem. Then there's insertion, which a section of chromosome can be inserted or deleted or changed position. So these are chromosomal level, but there's also gene level, which causes a change in the code, the A, C, T, or G. Uh, you'll read about them in the section. I also want to show you this. This is DNA uh, damage and repair. We're going to see this at the very end of this particular, um, this particular screencast. So let's go over the lesson summary. Mutations are caused by environmental factors caused, uh, which are known as mutagens. We talked about them. Germline mutations, which are in your sex cells. Uh, somatic can be in any cells and they can be caused by chromosomes changing or point mutations in a single letter like A, C, T, or G. And uh, mutations are essential, believe it or not, for evolution to occur because they increase genetic variation and the potential for individuals to differ. The majority of mutations are neutral. They have no effect on us whatsoever. Some are beneficial and some are harmful and can even cause genetic disorders or cancer. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how your body repairs mistakes in the DNA. I think you'll find this interesting. just one of your cells gets damaged tens of thousands of times per day. Multiply that by your body's hundred trillion or so cells and you've got a quintillion DNA errors every day. And because DNA provides the blueprint for the proteins your cells need to function, 
damage causes serious problems, such as cancer. The errors come in different forms. Sometimes nucleotides, DNA's building blocks, get damaged. Other times nucleotides get matched up incorrectly, causing mutations. And nicks in one or both strands can interfere with DNA replication, or even cause sections of DNA to get mixed up. Fortunately, your cells have ways of fixing most of these problems, most of the time. These repair pathways all rely on specialized enzymes. Different ones respond to different types of damage. One common error is base mismatches. Each nucleotide contains a base, and during DNA replication, the enzyme DNA polymerase is supposed to bring in the right partner to pair with every base on each template strand, adenine with thymine and guanine with cytosine. But about once every 100,000 additions, it makes a mistake. The enzyme catches most of these right away and cuts off a few nucleotides and replaces them with the correct ones. And just in case it missed a few, a second set of proteins comes behind it to check. If they find a mismatch, they cut out the incorrect nucleotide and replace it. This is called mismatch repair. Together, these two systems reduce the number of base mismatch errors to about one in one billion. But DNA can get damaged after replication too. Lots of different molecules can cause chemical changes to nucleotides. Some of these come from environmental exposure, like certain compounds in tobacco smoke. But others are molecules that are found in cells naturally, like hydrogen peroxide. Certain chemical changes are so common that they have specific enzymes assigned to reverse the damage. But the cell also has more general repair pathways. If just one base is damaged, it can usually be fixed by a process called base excision repair. One enzyme snips out the damaged base, and other enzymes come in to trim around the site and replace the nucleotides. UV light can cause damage that's a little harder to fix. Sometimes it causes two adjacent nucleotides to stick together, distorting the DNA's double helix shape. Damage like this requires a more complex process called nucleotide excision repair. A team of proteins removes a long strand of 24 or so nucleotides and replaces them with fresh ones. Very high frequency radiation, like gamma rays and x-rays, cause a different kind of damage. They can actually sever one or both strands of the DNA backbone. Double strand breaks are the most dangerous. Even one can cause cell death. The two most common pathways for repairing double strand breaks are called homologous recombination and non-homologous end joining. Homologous recombination uses an undamaged section of similar DNA as a template. Enzymes interlace the damaged and undamaged strands, get them to exchange sequences of nucleotides, and finally fill in the missing gaps to end up with two complete double-stranded segments. Non-homologous end joining, on the other hand, doesn't rely on a template. Instead, a series of proteins trims off a few nucleotides and then fuses the broken ends back together. This process isn't as accurate. It can cause genes to get mixed up or moved around, but it's useful when sister DNA isn't available. Of course, changes to DNA aren't always bad. Beneficial mutations can allow a species to evolve, but most of the time, we want DNA to stay the same. Defects in DNA repair are associated with premature aging and many kinds of cancer. So if you're looking for a fountain of youth, it's already operating in your cells, billions and billions of times a day.